Welcome back to my home, you guys. Please excuse my voice today, guys. I'm a little bit under the weather, but I still wanna show up for you today and do this video. Um, I really wanna show you how I style a room. First and foremost, I really want you guys to know the difference between an interior designer and an interior decorator. Am I an interior designer? No, but am I an interior decorator? Also no, but <laughs> I love interior design and interior decor. I love interiors, period. I just feel like it goes hand in hand with fashion. It's always been something that I love, that inspires me. I feel like my house is a reflection of me, but I did keep it somewhat basic, just knowing that I do have small kids. It's not the level of creativity that I'd love to have, but it is basic and functional for a family while still being stylish. And that's what I wanna show you today and exactly how I put it together. So let's go. I wanna start with the very first piece that I had for this room. This is our family room, our living room, whatever you wanna call it. And this is the most used room. We watch TV here, the kids play video games and chill, play here when I'm cooking dinner. It's a very used space and I wanted it to be a very functional space. Now, I started with this couch and to be honest, this couch is not my favorite. It's kinda of one of my least favorite pieces of furniture in this house, it's about six years old. And you know what? It's really not the best quality. We got it for a really good price. We didn't know the quality when we bought it. It was a fair price for what it is, but we wanted something functional and livable that, you know, might may or may not get destroyed with a couple of kids. I want to show you the next item that I got for this room, which is the rug. Now I knew that I had a dark gray couch and I needed a rug to tie into the room and work with the couch. Now a lot of interior decorators or designers say you start with the rug, you find a rug that you love and you start from the bottom to the top. I don't know if that's the right thing to do. I never follow the rules. This is how I did it. I got the couch first and then the rug and I just felt like, okay, I found a well-priced rug that I liked the style of and I figured, okay, so now we got green and I gotta work with green. I didn't have a plan to go with green, it's just what I found, the price was good, the style was good, and that's how I decided to incorporate green into this room. All right, so because this room is not so huge, but still like a fair size, I needed to make a couple more pieces of furniture in here work because it would look too empty with one sectional couch. Usually ottomans are typically square. I knew that wouldn't work in here, so I needed to find a round ottoman. I found one, I custom chose the material, which is a light gray leather. I knew I was in the gray family. I had to stay gray, but I wanted like a little dimension so that I could be a little more adventurous with my pillows. Have basic colors in terms of furniture, but be a little more bold with my pillows. So some of the cushions have not maintained their form, but the way to kind of elevate your mid-range furniture to look really high-end is with pillows. This is just some random, I don't even know what it's called, this piece that I found at LT. And I just think with the gray and the yellow, it's kind of in the green and gray family theme that we have going on here. It totally works. And what I keep in here is like remotes, blankets, and stuff like that just for chilling. And lastly, you guys, this pillow and this throw are from my condo when I was a single girl. I just brought them into this house. You know what? They're not gray, they're very beige and taupe, but because of the other pillows with the grays, the greens, the silvers, and the taupes, it all kind of ties together. So I kind of just put it all here in the corner to kind of just bring it all together. And what you have here is a functional, not too fancy, but still stylish, livable space for your classic nuclear family. <laughs> All right, so this room, same, but a little bit different in that I did start this room from the bottom up with the rug first, but that's only because I truly had a vision for this room and I knew exactly the type of rug that I wanted. So I had this made myself. It's a custom broad loom and I knew that this was the color scheme I was gonna work with and it was super versatile and I could kind of do whatever I wanted with this space with the rug like this. 
So after I got the rug, I knew I wanted some metallic silver vibe in here that I could kind of mix in with gold. So I had this couch made, which is, by the way, not expensive at all. It's not an expensive couch. The most expensive thing in this room are these pillows right here. The pillows are a lot more high-end than the couch, but same principle as I mentioned, this is how to make a room look high-end. It's not always about the piece of furniture itself, but it's how you style it. The only problem with these high-end pillows is that the inserts are usually filled with real feathers, which causes the feathers to kind of come out of the pillow all the time. So it's a problem that I have in the other room. There's always feathers coming out because that's the room that we use the most, so the feathers are always kind of flying everywhere. But here, they just kind of sit pretty. We do use this room though, contrary to what a lot of you guys said based on my home tour. If you guys follow me on Instagram, which you should if you don't, you will see that when I host people, I always have my family in this room, my family and friends playing the piano. We definitely do use this room. So that's why I definitely was really comfortable with spending more money on the accessories for this room because I knew that they would kind of like stand the test of time. So the next thing I wanna show you guys is how I styled the table. This table is a combination of high low for sure this table to begin with is definitely more of a high-end piece i was eyeing this coffee table for a little while i knew i wanted it i kind of knew i had to have it it was more of a splurge but again, I was comfortable with doing that, knowing that this is probably gonna be a forever piece in my home. I'll take it with me wherever I end up, and I feel like I'll have it forever, so this was kind of a worth it splurge for me. Another splurge on this table is this beautiful shell. I knew I wanted to incorporate golds with my silver, but I didn't wanna go overkill gold. I know it's really trendy right now, so I wanted accents instead of kind of this gold takeover, and I think this does the job beautifully. It ties in in every way. It's kind of like cream on the bottom, which works with the rug. It's gold, which complements all the silver. It was a bit of a splurge, but again, this is a lifetime piece. I truly, truly love it, and I think I'll have it forever. Okay, so next on this top shelf are some coffee table books. These were actually not a splurge, contrary to what you might think, because coffee table books are usually quite expensive in and around $100 and up. But I got them at HomeSense, which if you're in the US is equivalent to TJ Maxx. I think that's what it's called. HomeSense is like the clothing equivalent of TJ Maxx. So it's furniture for less, accessories for less, and you can find like super high-end coffee table books at a really reasonable price. This is Jonathan Adler, and this is a very famous piece by him, and he's done a lot of variations of this like continuing face thing. And I thought it was like a good way to incorporate this very recognizably Jonathan Adler piece, but just in the form of a candle. On the bottom shelf, we still have coffee table books. Um, the Chanel book I did splurge on, that's also from my condo when I was single and I just really was into the black and white vibe there. So I had that on my coffee table back then. And the other three books, same thing, um, not a splurge. Those are from HomeSense. And then next I have this beautiful silver tray this was a splurge it's really heavy it is a piece and I wanted silver again to tie in with gold there's kind of gold accents subtly placed everywhere here even with the fonts on the books it all ties in together and I wanted the silver to kind of complement the gold and then next I have these which were literally 10 bucks each again from HomeSense and they were during Halloween when you know you can find all these things during the Halloween season. Skulls are actually really trendy with interior design and decor, so I just thought, what a great way to jazz up my table in a stylish way on a budget. Oh my God, I just realized this while I'm shooting this. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my God. Honestly, Violet. That is Violet that did that. I always catch her playing in here and I'm always like, get out of there. All right, so these end tables, one of the pieces is a hand-me-down. The other piece is a higher end piece that I found. I just thought it was really cool and I really wanted to kind of invest in a cool piece. I don't even remember where this came from and this heart. 
I got from my wedding registry from Crate and Barrel. Shout out Crate and Barrel. This was a gift from them. And I filled it up with the most iconic lifesavers. That's right, Winto Green. Not winter, Winto. Do not get the blue package. It's the green package all the way. Winto Green, okay? This is what you need. They are so delicious and amazing. Hashtag not sponsored, but you know, lifesaver, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really wanted to show you guys how I style these rooms. There was a lot of interest based on my home tour. I really love having you guys here with me. I love doing these kind of videos for you. Let me know in the comments what you think, what you like, any ideas you might have. I love you guys so much. As always, I'll be back in a couple days with another great video for you. I can't wait to see you. Until next time, bye.